Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft and our mock and give you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And yesterday we went to ESPN and took a look at Mike Tannenbaum's mock draft, which, golly, that was a doozy. But freaking Matt Miller comes out with a seven round mock travel. Holy cannoli. So we're going to take a look at this sucker today. We'll go through round one and then we'll kind of run through day two and day three. I'm more kind of interested with maybe where certain players go or uh, just what players he includes because it's seven rounds. It's going to be a hell of a time. So let's go ahead. Take a look uh, at Caleb Williams going number one. I imagine that's right. You don't have to be a prophet to know this is happening. You can be deaf and blind and still know Caleb Williams is going to the Chicago Bears at first overall. Washington Commanders go with Jaden Daniels. So th this one's kind of up in the air for me. I mean, I know I would take Drake May, but I mean, so much, like, of course, quarter, like quarterback two, it's going to be hotly contested. Who or where the Commanders will go with it. We were like this uh, last draft with uh what was it the houston texans oh is it will levis is look anthony richardson is it cj stroud it ended up being stroud it ended up being stroud and it's gonna be like that with the commanders oh the commanders really love jj mccarthy oh no watch out oh jd daniels such a good fit for a cliff key Barry system oh drake may's better than both those guys Yes! <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild. Personally, I would take uh, Drake May. Oh, oh man. We got a trade. So, the Minnesota Vikings are moving up. They're going to exchange, obviously, 11 and 23 to the Patriots uh, with an additional first rounder in 2025. Yep, that's probably the going rate. We're going to look at what the 49ers did in that Dolphins trade. To move up for Trey Lance. They gave three first rounders to the Dolphins. Thank you kindly, by the way. Not that we did much with it. But uh, let's see. Minnesota takes Drake May. So we're like, it's wild. Because like, oh, the Vikings had a private workout with JJ McCarthy. So did a lot of teams. Oh, uh, well, the Minnesota Vikings really like Drake May. We'll see. That means Washington would have to pass on him. It's really going to be fascinating how this draft plays out and what it'll look like when it's all said and done. But the Vikings are definitely probably going to make a move up for quarterback. All right, we're going to have another trade at four. We're going to get real spicy. Oh, we do. And it's the Broncos of all teams. Okay, what are they given? All right, so. it was, Okay, so he has pick 12, a first rounder next year, and a first rounder in 2026. So Broncos are like to hell with future draft capital. That's what it is, to hell with future draft capital. Handed it all to the Cardinals, so we're going to see J.J. McCarthy go here to the Denver Broncos, and we got quarterback off the board, back to back to back to back. Four straight quarterbacks. Boy, that's nice for the Chargers, who are just, they should, at this juncture, just take Marvin Harrison Jr. And they do, thank goodness. This isn't a Mike Tannenball uh, Tannenbaum, Tannenbaum, wow, his name's tough to say, apparently. Thank goodness, because, like, freaking Tannenbaum had Marvin Harrison Jr. fall to pick nine. Spoiler alert in his mock draft. That was just absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. But, yeah, Chargers are sitting in a nice spot. Even if they can't trade down, just kind of hoping all, like, all these teams, like, fight up for a quarterback and you just kind of let, oh, look, a Marvin Harrison Jr. just kind of falls into our lap. Oh, boy. It's kind of dope. Uh, the New York Giants go with Malik Neighbors. All for it. I think it's a good pick. I think that's likely the receiver they're going to be staring down. Here at pick uh, six, you could also make a case for Roman Dunze. I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to make it here. Despite what Mike Tannenbaum thinks. Just out here taking jabs at him. But, uh, yeah, the Giants, they spent the offseason acquiring offensive line talent. Now they go address receiver. Pick seven, Tennessee Titans, Joe Alt. It's again, right after Caleb Williams going one, Joe Alt going at number seven is another one you could almost chalk up. The Falcons, I'm kind of curious, what does he do here? Dallas Turner. Okay, this one is another one that's uh, just chalked up. A lot of people were projecting it to happen this way. 
if this is me, I'm still like really trying to consider maybe do we take a, uh, or maybe do the Falcons take like a Roman Dunes A? Because I, I think that'd be fascinating. I think that's something definitely you should probably want to uh, consider. But I get it, man. They need edge help. This team's been hurting for an edge rusher for what feels like a decade. Let's grab them, Dallas Turner. Makes all the sense in the world to me. But if you want to know more about the prospects in this class, then check out my draft guide. I got over 400 prospects on that sucker. But why hear from me when you could hear from me? Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel big nine chicago bears go with roma dunze this one was to be expected the bears i think would be ecstatic if uh, malik neighbors or roma dunze makes it to here to uh pick nine so sounds good to me we got brock bowers going to the jets so like i got no problem with the jets going with like a uh with an offensive tackle but i think with their 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 small uh, Super Bowl window that they currently got, bringing in Tyron Smith, bringing in Morgan Moses, that they might go for a position that'll be more of an immediate impact, like tackle. That's great long term because obviously Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith aren't long term options, but they don't have a tight end to the elite a level of a Brock Bauer, so. Uh, or obviously, if a, if like a Malik Neighbors or Roman Dunze makes it this pick, I think that would be in the cards as well. So just something to consider there. Pick eleven. This is now the New England Patriots. They go with Olu Bashanu. Uh, so they address that tackle position. They're gonna have pick twenty three as well. Maybe they go with like a Bo Nix there or a Michael Penix. Maybe they just take a wide receiver and wait till like pick 34 i think that's their uh their next pick after that see who might be there and take a shot on one of those guys but yeah no i mean trade down just feels so good for the patriots it really does pick 12 this is the arizona cardinals after their trade they go brian thomas jr so they get that speedy big body long threat to pair up with michael wilson they also got greg dorch there in the slot Las Vegas Raiders go with Bo Nick. So, I, I mean, dude, Aiden, Aiden O'Connell's coming back. They paid Gardner Minshew. Drafting a third quarterback doesn't really feel like something that the Raiders are going to do in this draft. That's just me. They definitely could, but I don't think they're going to. I really don't. But now this puts the pressure on the Patriots at like pick 23 with Michael Penix being the only guy left on the board. Let's see if that's where the Patriots head, or maybe does Michael Michael Penix even go earlier than that? All right, we got Teledisa Fuanga going to the Saints. We know about the knee issue with Ryan Ramchak. We know Trevor Pennon hasn't been great. So tackle just feel, this is another one that feels easy, like easily you could just chalk in a tackle here. The question is which tackle, you know? The Colts go with Byron Murphy the second. Intriguing. Because, I mean, the Colts this offseason have really been just focused on bringing back their own guys. And a lot that a lot of that was the interior, like Grover Stewart and such. Uh, they also brought in Raekwon Davis. And they keep in mind, they drafted Eddie Tamiwa at Abare, who, might, I mean, again, he, he was coming in as a developmental guy. He's still deep on the depth chart. But, like, added more guys to that interior. Like, Quinion Mitchell's on the board. Right? I would go corner. I, I would go corner. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, they go with Troy Fatanu. Uh, this is another obvious one with the connection with Grubb uh, at Washington. Now the OC there for Seattle. You could play uh, Fatanu early on at guard. And I mean, their left guard spot is like... 
you can definitely bring in somebody. It's not looking great. So it makes a lot of sense here for Seattle to do that. But real quick, I got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. When you sign up using promo code BROSHMO, they will double your first deposit up to $100 in dues. And you want to get it on, in on the action because currently we got the big tournament going on. You know, that tournament that happens in March. Yeah, you can get in on the action and you could do so with a little extra funds if you sign up Use promo code BROSHMO, and then they'll match that first deposit up to $100 in dues. Again, if you sign up using promo code BROSHMO, your first deposit's $100, you got $200 to play with. Awesome. It's a great way to play, uh, whether it, whether you are better on the tournament or if you want to do like weekly best ball or just player prop bets, like check out Underdog Fantasy, but please bet responsibly, bet within your means, pick 17. Jacksonville Jaguars, they get Quinny on Mitchell just to fall to him. That's freaking phenomenal. I love that. I think the Jaguars, if they really do want to get Quinny on, because I think Quinny on is going to go a lot earlier than people anticipate, they're probably going to have to move up. I know Jags fans might not want to hear that because you've already lost a, a third round pick because of the Calvin Ridley trade you did a couple of years ago. So. You don't want to spend any more day two funds to move up, but I mean, I think Quinion's worth it. All right, Cincinnati Bengals go with Terry and Arnold. Hello. All right, let's read this one. After signing Trent Brown in free agency, the Bengals are clear to address defense in round one. I don't think that's the case. It's a one year deal. Amarius Mims, develop him for a year? Kind of makes sense to me. And plus, Trent Brown misses games. So I don't think offensive tackle is off. The radar for the Bengals. Team and Arnold up with DJ Turner, Cam Taylor Britt, and Mike Hilton gives Cincinnati's secondary a chance to compete with any team in the AFC. I don't know, man. I don't know if I like that. Like, Arnold's great. He's got flexibility. DJ Turner is probably someone you can move into the slot. Like, I'm so curious what the secondary is going to look like for the Bengals next year because. They brought in Geno Stone. Uh, who, who else? Because they got Jordan Battle, who was really good down the stretch for them. They have uh, Dax Hill. I feel like they may have brought in. Didn't they bring in Von Bell? Yeah, they did. So it's like, I'm so curious what the secondary is going to look like for the Bengals next year. So curious. Los Angeles Rams go with Jared Verse. Hey, dude, he's available. You take him, Rams. Pairing him up with Byron Young, that's great. You're going to get a nice speed to power player there to pair up with your very speedy Byron Young. I like that. I like it quite a bit. Okay, Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson. Currently, Nate Herbig is slotted to be center for the Steelers. So if they don't feel comfortable with that, obviously you could go in grab more competition i love jackson powers johnson i would take him inside the top 20. uh he's probably the best center prospect i've looked at since tyler linderbaum if you don't if you weren't with me during that draft i was an absolute mark for tyler linderbaum all right miami dolphins jc latham i don't i, I kind of like this he immediately could play guard for us while we he be, why he, while he develops into the heir apparent for Terry and Armstead because you know that cat's not going to be around forever. He might not be around past this season. So uh, J C Latham can immediately come in, play it, and I assume he's going to contend for right guard because we brought back Isaiah Wynn. We have Aaron Brewer at, Brewer at center, uh, so he can compete with Robert Jones there, who actually I re I've liked. Uh, the last couple of years. I think he's fine. I don't think he's like... If he's like your fifth best starter on the offensive line, I feel like you're probably in good shape. But a guy that they've developed out of Middle Tennessee State, I, I think he's all right. All right, Philadelphia Eagles go with Nate Wiggins. This one's all right. This one's fine. Obviously, uh, the secondary is kind of like the biggest issue for them. Darius Slade, James Bradbury. They, 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 they were injured last season. They're also old. You really don't know what you have in like Keely Ringo, Eli Rick. So grab it more competition, more depth uh, to one of the most volatile positions in football. Probably the most volatile position in football, the quarterback position is always a, a good choice in my opinion. 
Pick 23. This one's the Patriots. And they go with Cooper DeGene. I mean, okay. I know that the, pa the Patriots, uh, they like press. Whether that's... Because uh, they've dabbled in like zone, a lot of zone recently. They're not the man-heavy team that you remember. Uh, so, like, Cooper would be a fine pick. And he's got the size to contend out there on the outside that's why i'm a big fan of his so yeah we're i mean i guess the patriots are just like yeah screw quarterback we, we have extra draft capital next year and hopefully we fall in love with the guy next year maybe i don't know maybe at pick 34 we're, we're still gonna have michael Penix on the board and they can take a shot at him but yeah i like cooper DeGene, man i don't know where he's gonna fit into this draft because many teams are gonna view him very differently but color me intrigued Dallas Cowboys, Marius Mims. Ooh. So the Cowboys could play play Mims at guard. Dude, freaking. That's what he just said here. They could play Mims at guard and move Tyler Smith to tackle. Mims is freaking huge. I don't know, man. I think I'd rather just develop him and just play him at tackle. I don't know. I'm okay with it because I really like the ceiling of a Marius Mims, so kind of cool with it regardless uh before we get in pick 25 what's crack lacking it's your boy bro Schmo, just in case you did not know so go ahead become bro and subscribe and leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice beautiful football discourse green bay packers go with tyler guyton okay so i think this is that was the pick in uh mike tannenbaum's draft but uh this is fine i mean the packers like to develop their guys so you don't have to throw tyler guyton out there right away uh i really think they're gonna they like wallace so like i, I don't know man packers are kind of a tough team to project where they may go because it's not like they got a lot of holes but i really do love the idea of them going with corner it's just i don't know they'll probably have to use some of that extra draft capital to move up uh, if they're going to really get one of the top corners in this class. Maybe they're okay with like a uh, Kool-Aid McKentry. I love Kool-Aid. I'd be willing to take him here at the back end of the first round. He, honestly, he's probably going to be in my top 20 because I think he's that safe of a pick. Pick 26, Liatu Latu going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It always feels like Liatu Latu falls here to uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 26. I think in reality, he goes in the top 20. Uh, I think he's in, he, he's in play for pick eight. The Atlanta Falcons, but yeah, Buccaneers, they they showed that they could have a very productive pass rush with the rotation. Like Joe Tryon was pretty solid in the rotation. Uh yeah, yeah Diaby looked really good last year during the uh last part of the season. So yeah, this would be fun. This would be good. Arizona Cardinals go with Graham Barton. Ooh, so they go with the interior. They could definitely upgrade some of the parts of their interior. Uh, you probably play Graham Barton early at center. Uh, have him over a Foyo, Froyo. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't mind this pick. I like it. I like it. So if we do remember the uh, Cardinals trade back and got, oh, uh, what was it? They well, they got Brian Thomas earlier in the draft, and oh, they got draft picks for. 20, a first rounder for 2025 and a first rounder for 2026. So that's pretty good. All right, Buffalo Bills go with Adonai Mitchell. I like this. I know that they went out, got some receiving help in uh, Mac Collins, in uh, Curtis Samuel. But I think Mitchell's different than those guys. He gives them a very savvy route runner who can stretch the field vertically. So I'm all for it. Detroit Lions, they go with Shot Robinson. So uh, I know some Lions fans don't like don't like the idea of this because essentially I think he replaces James Houston as the the high end DPR guy because Robinson's probably should be a DPR option early in his career as you develop him. But it's just like the the athletic ability that he brings to the table is just so enticing, it really is. Baltimore Ravens go with Lad McConkey. Like, this is fine, but I think I'd rather go with like Xavier Leggett, Ricky Parasol, uh, maybe maybe Keon Coleman. Uh, like Lad's fine, but I feel like his role is more of what Zay Flower does already. But 
I don't know. I mean, it's a good receiver. I ain't, I ain't going to be mad at it. All right. San Francisco 49ers go with Jordan Morgan. I think he immediately upgrades either your right tackle spot or one of your guard spots. And uh, maybe could be an heir apparent for Trent Williams. It does feel like offensive line would be a good get for the Niners if it falls to him. Uh, I think corners also. Probably more likely corner is in play because I, I think the Niners really like their the current guys they have on that offensive line. But I don't know. We'll see. Then we got Kansas City Chiefs going Xavier Worthy. Speed kills. We already know this one. Let's go ahead and move to day two. <laughs> All right, Panthers take Xavier Leggett. I like that. Pairing him up with uh, Deion Johnson, uh, Deontay Johnson. You got Thielen and Mingo there, and you're suddenly you're feeling much better about your receiving core. Uh, Keon Coleman. So the Patriots are literally saying screw quarterback until 2025, and I think that's something they could definitely do. I definitely think that's something the Patriots could end up doing. So they get a receiver. I would like to see them get a bit more of a separator, but Keon Coleman, like, you know he's got the play speed. You saw him during the gauntlet drill. So I think he just needs to work on his actual route running and how to separate. Uh, a lot of that has to do with his hips and whatnot. Uh, we got Johnny Newton going to the Cardinals. Good pickup here at 35. Uh, we got Darius Robinson going to the Commanders. Get a nice versatile piece along that offensive line. Defensive line, excuse me. Kamari Lassiter. I don't know, man. Kamari Lassiter. Uh, I I mean, I like Kamari Lassiter, but I would like if I already had entrenched a top option at corner one. Santi Samuel Jr., I wouldn't say necessarily he is a cornerback one right now. I think we've seen some of the... We, we, we've seen the possibilities, but... I don't think we've seen it consistent enough. So like, I don't know. I think I'd rather get more of an upside corner because you, you are going to worry about his play speed. Like Kamari Lasser is going to be, I think, a really good corner too in the league. Let's see, tight ends. They go with Edwin Cooper, Edwin Cooper Jr. All right, let's read this. New de uh, defensive coordinator, Denard Wilson, is bringing a base 3-4 to Tennessee, and that means he needs linebackers. Kenneth Murray was added on a two-year deal, but Cooper is the draft's best linebacker and a true three-dump. Well, what about their other guy? Did, don't they like, what's his name, Gideon or something? Gibbons? Something like that. He kind of emerged last year for the Titans. If anything, I'm probably looking at Aaron Cooper like, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Kenneth Murray. Hop on the pine, bud. <laughs> Carolina Panthers go with Keithley Sumatea. Okay, so they're grabbing him as a developmental guy who can eventually replace maybe a Tyler uh, Taylor Moton. Or honestly, if things continue to go south with with Kevin Guanu, like this year wasn't exactly great for him. So you're kind of hoping he bounces back because he, he had a decent rookie cap campaign. But probably more so heir apparent for Moton. You could get off his contract too. So yeah, no, I don't I don't mind. Like day two, you're typically looking to your future needs. Patrick Paul going to the commanders. So they snag him. Don't think you probably want to start him early. But honestly, like, dude, if Andrew Wiley keeps sucking, dude, I'd be like, hey, Patrick Paul, man. We need you. Go learn. Go learn on the fly. Uh, and it's Rakestraw Jr. going to the Packers, so they do address that corner position. Uh, Brayden Fisk feels like a guy you could almost pencil in for the Texans. A lot of people think he's going to go top 50. I don't think he goes first round, but I definitely could see him go top 50. And the Texans could be a team that uh, just continue to add guys to that interior. If you're not familiar, D'Amico uh, Ryans loves a deep defensive line rotation. Kool-Aid McKentry. Wow, the fall was real. Oh, man, I would have taken him for the Chargers. But golly, the Falcons get a hell of a player here. I like that. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So, yeah, confirm. Ran a 4, 4, 7, 40. And that's with the Jones fracture. I love that. Roger Rosengarden, man. He's getting a bit, been getting a lot more love. I, he's probably going to be like a back end of the third round guy for me, but... He has been getting quite a bit of like 
second round love in recent mocks. Uh, I don't know why you would do this for did. Oh, the Raiders took Bo Nix. That's right. So yeah, you are grabbing him to play right tackle. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I was like, did they take Fuanga? No, they did not. <laughs> All right, we got uh, Roman Wilson going to the Saints. I feel like this is kind of whatever. It's not exactly who you want to replace Michael Thomas with in terms of body. Uh, I feel like they would want to get maybe a bigger guy out there, play out uh, on the outside, have a little more physicality to your receivers because like, Olave and Rashid Shaheed are more your like separators. I would want to get a little bit more meat at wide receiver if I'm the Saints. Okay, we got the Colts going with Marshawn Nealon. Love this guy. Uh, Quiddy Pay. I think he his contract comes up next year, along with uh, Deo Odenimbo. So you could definitely, definitely definitely be out two edge players and you could just insert Marshawn Neeland the Giants they go with Michael Penix so essentially quarterback in the future and like if crap hits the fan with Daniel Jones which probably will happen Michael Penix is right there you don't even have to go to Drew Locke you could just go ahead and see what you got at Michael Penix Jaguars take Mason Smith, so they get a little deeper on the uh, defensive line. That's fine. Uh, we got Bengals going with Ricky Parasol. I love that. I think he'd be a really good replacement for uh, Tyler Boyd in the slot, but he could also play outside. Peyton Wilson going to the Eagles. Yeah, they, they've been adding like linebackers, but like Devin White down the stretch was used as an edge player for the Bucks. Zach Bond was an edge player trying to be converted to off like off off ball linebacker, and that kind of didn't work out exactly for the Saints. So like getting a true linebacker back there, like Zach or like uh, Peyton Wilson, is key. Malachi Corley, this is what I mean, man. Pittsburgh, they they love they love getting a guy day two. And just making him a really good wide receiver. They typically they do this all the time. We talk about Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens. It's just what the Steelers do. And they get Corley here. That's hella fun. Especially for Arthur Smith, actually. Especially for Arthur, Arthur Smith. Uh, Kalen Bullock going to the Rams here. So this would be an upgrade. on Because I'm not a big Russ Yeast guy. And Cameron Curl is going to be your box player for the most part. Bullock could actually patrol deep. He is that like center fielder. Uh, they do have Quinton Lake, but he did so well in the slot last year. You're probably going to keep him there. So, yeah, hella fun. We got Tez Walker going to the Eagles. They did bring in Devontae Parker, Paris Campbell, but I'd still be looking for an upgrade at that wide receiver three. Do they do it this early? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Vondre Sweat, great pickup. Don't know if they love Siaki Ika. We haven't seen a lot of them. Sure as hell tell you they're going to love Devondre Sweat. Miami Dolphins go with Zach Frazier. Yo, we signed Aaron Brewer. Okay. Okay. Okay, so they say Frazier has the tools to start at guard or center. So, like, he would have to start at guard, uh, which I'm not going to fight, man. Uh, looking at Zach Frazier. Yeah, he's got the late to play guard. It's not like he's these, guy, these guys with, like, sub 32-inch arms. Guys like uh, what you got. You got Bo Limmer, probably limited to playing uh, center in the league. Uh, Tanner Bordellini, Cedric Van Pran, all those guys with sub 32 inch arms probably means they're going to end up playing center only in the NFL. That's not necessarily the case with Zach Frazier. So I don't mind that, dude. I like Zach Frazier. You get a one hell of a football player. Uh, who did we draft? In the first. I can't even remember who we took in the first. Uh. Jonathan Brooks going to the Cowboys. This is one that a lot of people are going to project, whether it's in the second or the third round because of uh, some of the medical team from the uh, Cowboys having kind of the inside scoop on the uh, recovery 
process for Brooks. So, yeah, I mean, he's from Texas. It just, it, you're just connected dots here. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Cooper, BB. They get that left guard spot. The left guard spot is probably the biggest weak spot on their roster currently. Uh, also, keep in mind that you're, you're kind of hoping Cody Mock takes that next step up after kind of a ah, rookie season. Packers go with Mason McCormick. Yes, let's get the Mason McCormick love going here. I love it. I lo lo love it immediately. He He's like, I'll play right guard. I'll replace uh, John Runyon. Uh, shoot, man. I could even replace Josh Myers. He's that good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tyler Newbin for safety off the board. Or no, no, no. That was Kalen Bullock. This safety class is weird, man. However, like everyone in their mom is going to have... The safety class ranked in all kinds of different ways. It's it's not a it's not a great safety class, but in the third round, it's actually pretty darn good. But Texans Texans grab him. I mean, you gotta start looking for Jimmy Ward's uh, heir apparent, right? Got TJ Tampa going to the Bills, so they get some cornerback depth there. I'm cool with that. I love TJ Tampa. Troy Franklin going to the Lions. Interested. I think they would want a little bit more of a physical wide receiver. Uh, Mike Sainer is still going to the Ravens. He's going to come in there and play the slot. So very fascinating there. Uh, they would have to move. Well, I mean, they played a lot of quarters match, which essentially is man coverage after a few yards. So I guess I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Niners get Chris Jenkins and get some interior help. That's great. Uh, you got Javon Bullard. Hello. Uh, I mean, they're already kind of set at safety, but I mean, I mean, Bullard gives them some versatility, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, if you're going to move Trent McDuffie outside, then you're going to be looking for some more guys that can kind of hold down that slot position potentially. All right, we got Chris Braswell going to the Panthers. They grab edge help. There's Braylon Trice, so those those edges start to jump off the board. Speaking of which, you got Ad uh, Adisa Isaac, so three edges back-to-back. Jalen McMillan getting some hype. Okay, okay. So they get a speedy guy after taking Keon Coleman. Uh, Jatavion Sanders is the first tight end off the board since Brock Bowers. Uh, everyone's tight end rankings after Brock Bowers are going to be kind of, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Christian Haynes, I think the guy could go higher. Exceptional value here at 70. Uh, Max Melton going to the Cardinals. Very versatile cornerback. Cameron Kitchens. Yeah, I think Kitchens is safely a third round prospect at this point. Not the greatest draft process. Uh, unfortunately, had a very up and down season for Miami. So, but I mean, this would be a really good gift for the Jets. Detroit Lions take Jaden Hicks. This is, I think he has a potential to be a, the, uh, the top safety off the board to watch out. Michael Hall going to the Falcons. That's fun. You got Jonah Ellis. Ooh, I can't wait till his pro day. Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I'm pretty sure his pro day was like a couple of days ago. I could be wrong. I gotta go take a look at that, but I'm a big fan of Jonah Ellis. Uh, Andrew Phillips going to the Broncos. So the Broncos do need someone to play opposite of Pat Sertan. Braden Rice, man. The Raiders, they had Jerry Rice for a little bit. Now they bring in his son. Hella fun. Uh, you got Kyrie. Oh, man. Kyrie Jackson. That's a fun pick. Get in some actual size at corner. Let's go. Atlanta Falcons go with Junior Colson. Good pick up there, a linebacker. Jalen Wright going to the Bengals. I mean, they brought in Zach Moss. They saw some promise from Chase Brown. I think Chris Evans is an effective enough, like, pass blocker, receiving back that you probably don't have to go running back, <laughs> at least on day two. Seahawks take Jalen Ford. Look at him getting some height. So he just sits outside of my top 150. Uh, this is a little early for Ford based on feedback from the NFL. Called it. But the Seahawks need a young linebacker for new head coach Mike McDonald to train him into his uh, Roquan Smith. Okay, okay. 
Let's see. We got Chris Abrams Drain. Probably heir apparent to Kenny Moore. Probably heir apparent to Kenny Moore. But he could also play on the outside. Aruka uh, Rohoro, I feel like he's going to go a lot earlier, but that would be a fun player to pair up with Kobe Turner. But you, I mean, they have their size in like Bobby Brown. So it's like they, they, they got a little, little bit of a decent rotation there. Pittsburgh Steelers go with Christian Jones. Uh, another guy that can play either left or right tackle. That's fine. Uh, Trey Benson, golly, if you're the Browns, what a steal. Like, like if, if you don't trust... Nick Chubb being able to come back to 110%. Golly, dude. Trey, Trey Benson. Oh. And that sucks. I love Jerome Ford. Uh, Bo Limber going to the Texans. There we go. So, I mean, honestly, like, straight up, like, Juice Scruggs could move to guard. And it'd be a-okay. Jalen Polk here at 87. He does feel like a wide receiver that often falls in a uh, lot of people's mock drafts. So him being available at 87 does feel like a steal, but it's not unprecedented. This would be a good pickup for the Cowboys. Pick 88, Brandon Norris. Very versatile defensive lineman. Don't really know what he's going to do in the NFL, but Packers could figure it out. I mean, they now have a very versatile defensive line. Uh, DJ James, bit undersized. Not terribly, though. He's got it up to 181. Uh, but he, he would be good. He would be good depth there. And in all honesty, I mean, <laughs> they hit it out of the park with the last Auburn corner they drafted in Jamil Dean. So maybe they do with James. Uh, Jermaine Burden, someone that probably should go much higher, but there's some character red flags there. Be a good pickup for the Cardinals. I don't think Gabriel Murphy's a day two guy. Just there's, I don't like the length. Uh, I don't think he's like a uber good athlete i think he's fine if anything i feel like he's gonna have to become an off-ball linebacker that has some blitz and upside i think that's his role in the nfl so i just don't like him as a true edge player jeremiah trotter going to the bucks here gotta look for that era apparent now that uh devin white is gone and well levante david's old dominic pooney getting a versatile player there that could play honestly all five positions showed that he could play center as well but you're getting him to play guard obviously san fran they go with zach zittner big fan of zach zittner i like them addressing offensive line dwayne carter so getting some help there for chris jones i like it we got javon baker i'm a big fan of baker man I'm a big fan of baker i think he goes somewhere in the late second to anywhere in the third round because like, people talk about him anywhere from, like, pick 50 to, like, pick 100. So, like, that that being his, like, landing zone, it's kind of hard to project where he may go. But I really like what he did at uh, Central Florida. Blake Fisher going to the Bengals. So, grab us a developmental offensive line there. Renardo Green's a phenomenal pickup here by the Steelers. Big fan. I think he could go much higher. Here's Kieran Amagaji. So, they get their, uh, their developmental tackle. It's kind of, like be the guy that come up and unseat Alaric Jackson somewhere down the line at left tackle. Theo Johnson, so the commanders take a shot on a very toolsy tight end. Unfortunately for Johnson, you know, the production uh, just ha it was never there during his uh, career at Penn State. All right, let's run through the, the this day three. We see the running backs now start to come off with like Blake Corum, there's uh, Braylon Allen to the Panthers. You got Cole Bishop, Spencer Rattler going to the Patriots. Oh, man, that's that's nice. Wow, Miles Hayden. I feel like that's a little early for him. Uh, kind of like he showed that he could compete with FBS talent because he's from South Dakota, but he showed that at the Shrine. Uh, I still like him as more of a mid-day three guy, but like this ain't bad. This ain't bad. Uh, Delmar Glaze going this high is a little intriguing to me, but okay. Yo, this makes me happy that Trevin Wallace, because I've seen people be as low as like, oh, he's probably a seventh round to UDFA. And I'm like, ah, I'm, he's got a lot of traits I'm willing to bet on. Let's see, any other surprises here? Uh, Jared Wiley. did Jared Wiley to the Eagles. That's kind of fun. 
Uh, Malik Washington, big fan of Malik Washington as well. There's Rabbit Taylor Deverson. Let's go, going to the Bucks. Uh, Michael Pratt going to the Packers. Apparently they don't like them. Uh, John Clifford. Oh, uh, let's see. Javante Jean Baptiste. He got up to 247 at his pro day because he he was sick at the combine, so he he was like real light. So I'm glad to see him put that weight back on. Still feel better about him as like a mid to late day three player. Uh, there's Garrett Greenfield. Dude, Ben Sennett going at 135. He's tied in two for me. Hello. There's Curtis Jacobs, by the way. All right, let's go round five. Uh, there's Ray Davis to the Cardinals. Be a really good pickup here. Wow, he's got Isaiah Williams way up there. I got kind of got him on the fringe of being like... A UDFA. Uh, there's Jerry and Jones being available. That's a really good pickup. Jalon Carlisle. I don't know if that guy's a... He might be a linebacker in the NFL. All right, looking at some of this. You got Kalen Keen coming off the board. Cedric Van Pran really having a fall here, too. Uh, Isaiah Davis going on the Broncos is kind of whatever. I really feel like Jarvis Brownlee. I'm higher on him than the general consensus, and I'll admit that. I know it. It is what it is. But going in the fifth round here, I think is really good value. I'd be willing to take him in like the mid to late third round. Like you go to his tape, and I think I thought his tape was that good. Isaac Gutterendo going to the Vikings. You get to sit a year behind Aaron Jones. Heck yes. I like that. Uh, I love the Dolphins picking up Christian Boyd. This is kind of a dream scenario for me for the Dolphins. I love that. Well, I don't think Matt Jones is uh, draftable, but to each their own, I I suppose. Oh, we got Kamal hey, uh, Hayden, dude. I actually really like this cat. Uh, just him getting hurt at the end of the year. Uh, I think he's Tennessee hasn't had their pro day yet, but uh, honestly, he, he looked really good on the on-field drills at uh, Mo, at um, at the Combine see what else Devin Leary okay in the fifth round I feel like that's a bit of a reach but okay dude Tyrone Trace I think Tyrone Trace is going much higher than this uh Hunter Norzad though that's that's a great pickup for the Cowboys that's gonna be your starting center all right we're to the sixth round dude Edifon they got he's got him as a six rounder potentially golly I don't know about that sucker I don't know about that. Willie Drew, I feel like I want draft. Rather just sign him and get him in camp. Uh, let's see. We got a kicker going. Let's go. Angles grabbing Dallin Holker in the sixth round. You'll watch out. I love Holker. I'm a big fan. Xavier Weaver. I don't know if he's going to have his own pro day. I didn't see if he had any numbers at, at Colorado's pro day. I, I didn't get numbers for him, so... I don't know, man. I don't know if he's draftable at this point. Jawan Briggs, to me, is a big sleeper. Like, watch out. This guy's built like a, a bowling ball, and he hits like a wrecking ball. Uh, Quantez Stiggers going to the Packers. That's such a great pickup late. This, is, this, this, this cat was rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year for the CFL. Uh, I, like, I like Nathaniel Watson as a guy that's going to be, at the very least, a really good special teamer but could end up being like a wrecker in the run game. It's like an early down linebacker. Let's see. Any other crazy things that might pop out? Not so much yet. Tyler Owens. Golly, he's someone I'm willing to take a shot on. Just such a freaky athlete, former five-star. Yes, please. Oh, Sione Vaki. I mean, dude, no one... like. Unless you have an actual plan, is he running back? Is he safety? Is he slot receiver? I could see him falling because of that. There's my boy Dwight McLaughlin. Didn't exactly test out great. Is what it is. Uh, I like Cedric Johnson as a potential like project, dude. I'm so much higher on Jordan McGee, dude. Can I say you love who you love? Uh, let's see what else. KT Leviston. Got some tackle experience guarding the NFL. I think he's got some upside there. There's uh, Ryan Flournoy. 
out of uh, Southeast Missouri State. Had a really good senior bowl. There's actually the Holy Cross receiver, Jalen Coker. Oh, Zion Toy Peloto. I don't know if it's a shoulder injury that's or or an arm injury that's kept him out of the off-season draft process. Like he was at the shrine talking about how man, yeah, I'll be I ha I have to miss the uh combine, but he'll be ready to go by camp. So that's just so unfortunate. Hey, there he is, Joe Milton. Going to get converted to tight end. But wow, dude. That was interesting. Hey, if you want to go check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. But that's it for the video. Go ahead. Do that YouTube theater as always. Until next time. Be easy, my friends. Later.